No, Patrick's on Team Viewer. Okay, he's on. He's on. Oh, he's on yeah. Team Viewer. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Here's a second, guys. Okay, so I have a couple clips here. I have some that are recorded inside, and I have some that are recorded outside. So I'm going to perform some noise reduction and clean up on it. Uh, some of these you guys are going to hear already sound like really good, and so we're going to kind of be finessing them. Some of them are recorded outside under less ideal circumstances, and so we're going to kind of kind of clean them up and make them a little bit easier. Um, um, great. Okay, I think Pat's done. Sweet. So uh, this is Isotope RX. Okay, this is a software that I use for noise reduction. There's a lot of softwares that are pretty similar to it and do similar things. Adobe Audition yeah, has some tools that are really similar. I um, something in class with that. Yeah, totally. So a lot of these principles that I'm going to say apply to multiple things, right? The most important things that when you're using stuff like this is you really need to use your ears because with noise reduction, number one problem is people do too much. Okay, and then it really ends up sounding worse than it did originally. So, um, importing uh, stuff into Isotope RX, it's drag and drop, right? So all I did was take these files off the desktop and drag them in, right? And I've got them in here now, and I'm ready to go. These happen to be mono files; they're being represented as stereo. Both channels are the same, right? So now, say I was editing something, are you just exporting the uh, separate clips, or can you drag in like EDLs? Uh, I usually just usually have to go clip by clip, but what it does have is batch processing. So if you can set up your, if you have multiple um, people recorded at one location, same equipment, the same you can sort of process them the same way. Okay. Um, I recommend listening to everything, but you know, another thing you can do is if you have like a, a clip and it's already edited in your timeline, you can pull that out, process it, and drop it right back in. You know, same sort of thing. You know, um, so let's listen to this clip. Guy's got his cell phone oh. busted. Um, so I think that this was recorded inside. Let's listen. Okay, so I'm going to so talk about this window. Of the health under the Clean Air Act, the National Clean Air Act. Great. Okay, so we have a couple different views here, right? This is a waveform view. This might look familiar to some of you guys if you've done any editing work, right? This is a linear representation of your audio, right? If you zoom in really close, you can see it's all sound waves like I was showing you guys, right? Mm -hmm. See this? This is what we were talking about before. Same thing, right? Just a lot more of them. Um, and so RX allows you to view it this way or the way that's more useful for this type of work, which is called a spectrogram, right? So your frequencies are represented on the vertical axis. So zero hertz is down here. You can see there's like not a lot happening down there. 100 hertz and so on up to 20,000 hertz, right? Again, not happening, not a lot happening up here. But you can see this part where he's talking, you see sound kind of across the spectrum, right? That's his voice, right? The fundamental of his voice is like... The brighter yellow? Yep, the brighter orange is amplitude of the sound, right? So you can see here, this is like a fundamental of his voice in this area. And that's like a rent between 100 and 500 hertz, right? That's where the body of the human voice lives, okay? So if we listen to that one part, you can see... So in terms of understanding the health, under the Clean Air Act, the National right. Clean Air Act... That's it, you can see... Climate versus this part, that's the background noise. So um, what are the problems that you guys hear with this clip? Anyone just want to point out a couple issues? Yeah, we just got some background noise, right? So I'm going to actually increase the, the gain of this uh, clip really quick just for us to hear it a little bit louder. Uh, I just made it louder. There we go. Yeah. No. So in terms of understanding the health Never under the Clean Air Act, the National Clean Air Act, there's a requirement to review. Great. So one of the cool things about RX is now you guys saw I just increased the gain, but I went too far. This is like RX basics number one. We have a seriously awesome undo function. The team viewer just shut down. Okay, right? So here I can see everything that I've done so far is going to appear in a chain, right? So gain. If I want to go back one previous, click here. Oh. Done. It's pretty sweet, right? I wish some video softwares and my audio software had that clean thing. And then I redo it and it covers it up, right? So here I'm back, back and forth, right? I can go back to any point in my chain. It keeps like 100 moves or something. It's really sweet. So here's our noisy clip, right? So we're going to tackle the background noise first, right? 
question with the undo part. Yep. So since I got a running list, say I had maybe two others pass the game, but I'd say I just want to take out the game yeah. and leave the other changes that I did. If I clicked on the game, would it keep the other changes? Nope. You got to go in order. Okay. Yeah, because of the way audio processing works, if you remove your noise stacking. and then remove your pops after, you know, it has to redo them in a different order and it changes how it affects the system. Destructive editing. Yeah, destructive editing. Right. Um, so uh, here we got room tone at the end. Alan's the man. He always records room tone. I love it. I don't know if this is him recording room tone or if it's then just stopping and still recording, right? But it does me what, what I need. So noise reduction, the first step in good noise reduction, denoises, we're going to take a noise print, right? So here's the denoise tool. We have a couple options, spectral and dialogue. Dialogue is kind of a more automatic one. Spectral allows us to really kind of dig in there and get crazy. Um, I'm going to go for spectral right now just for this demonstration, and then I'll show you the other one. So I'm going to set it to manual mode, and I've highlighted the section I want. This is my room tone. I'm going to hit preview, which runs my sound through here, and then I'm going to hit, well, it's learned it now because it's unadaptive, but I'm going to highlight that. There we go, and I'm going to hit learn. So it just took this, see this frequency curve here? That is my like noise footprint. So then when I take this section here where he's talking, it's great work you do here. Um, you must yeah. feel good. You can hear, you can see so this good, is, uh, his voice, and as it comes above the other sound, it's like kind of cutting out the stuff below that. Now the problem is, is we're doing like maximum noise reduction. So if we go take like this chunk, and then go through that. Here. We're making great progress in the terms of cleaning like, up the air, but it's going to take a while to Until that happens, there are this things we can do. Funny, right? It's too much. So I'm going to increase our quality to C and our reduction. Like, let's say we're starting at 15. It's like the default's like 12, right? Let's listen to that. We're making great progress in terms of cleaning up the air, but, but it's going to take a while. Until so. right? so that happens. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to bump it down. I'm going to do like six, right? So let's just process this one clip. I'm going to hit process. Boom. You can see a visual difference, right? Here's the difference. Here's the noise. Let's play it back. And just we could use to minimize its impact and then go through that. All right. That's We're making difference. great progress in terms of cleaning up the air, but it's going to take a while. It sounds okay. Still a little bit noisy. Uh, principle of noise reduction, it's always better to do multiple passes with less reduction than it is to do one heavy pass. So if I think this is not enough, I just did six whatever's of noise reduction. Let's knock it down to five and do one more. See how it sounds. The key is just to always use your ears, right? And you listen. If it starts to sound weird, take it back a step. Minimize its impact. I'm gonna go through that. We're making great progress in terms of cleaning up the air, but it's gonna take a while. Still. Sounds okay. Until uh, that happens. You know what? There's another thing that's kind of funny. It's happening here. It sounds like the noise is coming in and out. You see that? We're making great progress in terms of cleaning up the air, but it's gonna take a while. Still. It's kind of like. It's called gating. That's one of the ways that noise reduction accomplishes its thing, is it kind of turns certain frequencies off when it doesn't hear sound at those frequencies. So the problem is, is that's kind of one of the weaknesses of, you know, noise reduction. That's where you have to be careful. So we went too far with that one. So let's take it back to before we did any noise reduction. Let's try this other tool, right? Maybe this one will work better. Let's capture a noise footprint, Let me go through that. learn, boom, that's what it looks like. Now let's preview it through here. We're making great progress in terms of cleaning up the air, but it's going to take a while still. Until that happens. We learned our noise footprint, actually. Yeah, I'm going to go through that. Great. There's our noise footprint. I don't know why it's not taking for some reason. There we go. All right. We're making great... We're making great progress in terms of cleaning up the air, but it's going to take so a while. That's a reasonable stuff. amount of noise production. So that now, happens, the cool thing. There are things we can do. You can make choices about where you exercise and when you exercise, and if you're feeling the onset of pollution effects, you can slow down, there. decrease your exercise rates, increase your breathing. When kind you're like driving, sounds here, so I'm going to hit process on that. That's like basic denoising, whatever. You know, the key is to always just listen, right? These are pretty simple tools, right? RX is a really good one because it's really actually the learning curve is pretty easy. You guys have questions so far just about this kind of noise reduction. Does this program uh, do just ongoing, like if you take a general noise footprint, could, will it do a live pass? Or, or like will it reduce a, a live? Like while you're listening to it? Right. Like um, keyframe, like. Well, not yeah, like the, I know what you're talking about, the plugin. 
the if plugin. You, if I use it as a plugin, yeah. for example, if you use it as a plugin, it will live process what you're what okay. you're hearing. Yeah, but the problem is, is it is kind of complicated piece of software, so it really eats up your CPU cycles. So it'll slow things down. So you can only really use like one noise reduction plugin at a time. Um, so we're making great progress. That's okay. That's up for you. It's gonna take a while. So I'm gonna say, all right, we're gonna move on to another clip, right? That was like really basic, but here we got one. Welcome to Temeco facility of Infineon Technologies Americas Incorporated. Okay, number one problem. This guy sounds so boring. We can't fix that. Nothing you can do about that, right? But we do have a noise floor. Yeah, I mean, it's air conditioning. But you know what? It's really low. But you know what? Great thing is it's really consistent because it's inside. So we'll do some noise reduction. Just see where we get with it, right? So I'm going to hit learn. Here's my noise footprint. A lot lower. Let's uh, see how it sounds with that. Welcome to Temecula facility of Infineon Technologies Americas Incorporated. We are happy that you have chosen Infineon as your place of work. A more subtle on this the Infineon Corporation right. is a world leader. I'm going to process it. Sounds good to me, right? Boom, you can see. The hollowness? I mean, yeah, we're going to get to that next because that's a problem. See? Welcome to Temecula. You hear how his sound, voice sounds really hollow? Welcome to Temecula facility of Infineon Technologies Americas Incorporated. I don't know what happened at this recording. I wasn't there. Um, I guess a small square room, <laughs> yeah. right? Not treated like this one is. And the problem is, is like I said, those first reflections, they make the voice sound hollow versus second reflections. Also, probably they could, this could be the shotgun track. I just pulled one of the tracks. I don't know which is which. So if that was the shotgun, that would make sense. But it could be the, the love track. It's going to suffer from similar issues, right? Um, so what we can do is, let's say his voice is sounding a little weak. You know, you can do this in your video software Welcome too. To but I'm going to take um, corrected EQ. Okay, if you guys know about frequency spectrums, this is the frequency spectrum, right? You can boost and cut different frequencies. So let's preview. Welcome to Temecula facility of Infineon Technologies Americas Incorporated. We are happy that you I can boost and cut whatever I want. It's great. So he sounded a little nasally to me, right? We talked about this. So welcome to Temecula like to facility kind of, of Infineon Technologies Americas Incorporated. We are happy that you have chosen Infineon as your place like of work. Part that I don't like. Infineon Corporate. Pull that down a little bit, right? Welcome to Temecula facility of Sugar AQ. Technologies America. To be small, small increments make big differences, right? If you start going crazy. Welcome to Temecula facility of Infinity Technologies like this. Americas Incorporated. Oh, we're not even listening to it right now. Yeah. Welcome to Temecula facility. Right. Of it Infinity gets dangerous really quick. So be really careful. We are happy that you have chosen Infinity as your place Sometimes of work. Like this. The Infinity Incorporated. Maybe I'm going to boost some lows. Welcome to Temecula facility of Infineon Technologies. I like the visual. Welcome to Temecula facility of Infineon Technologies. So let's process that chunk and let's see how it sounds right. Um, Infineon is your place of work. The Infineon Corporation is a work. Okay, Patrick's calling us. What's up, Pat? Okay, I don't know what's going on with this. Um, okay. Welcome to Temecula. That's an EQ tool, right? So I think the best method is if you're new, new to this. Welcome to Temecula audio. facility of Infineon Technologies Listen, America. There's no way you don't like. I mean, anything's going to sound We bad. are happy that you have chosen Infineon right. as your place Let's of work. Start little. The Infineon Corporation is start a world little. leader in manufacturing yeah. of electronics. Infineon yeah. designs, develops, manufactures, yeah. and markets a broad range of semiconductors and system yeah. solutions. The focus of their process, right? So we're going to do something like this. That's some corrective EQ, you know, but it's tough. You know, pointing out sounds really hollow. There's not a lot we can do about that. The best thing to do is just record it here in the first place. Um, all right, we're going to take another one. I think this is a studio VO, or at least I hope it is. Pyrophoric gases are Beautiful. used here at Infinity and Temecula. So this was recorded in this room, which sounds pretty good. We treated it. It's recorded with that mic. Uh, you have it pretty close to the mic. It's good, right? We got a good recording. Really low noise floor. I'm not going to worry about the noise floor in this, right? Pyrophoric gases are used here at Infinity and Temecula. Right? Pyrophorics are material. I think that her voice is a little bright. I think maybe that I would have maybe taken it up a little bit, maybe a little farther away, not recorded from below the nose so much. That's just my kind of thought, microphone technique wise. Pyrophoric gases are used here at Infinity. You go higher for females and then lower for guys, or it depends on the sound. Everyone has a different voice. I have a really nasally voice, you know, so I might record from below rather than above. But you know, everyone's voice is different, you know. Like I think Peter, your voice sounds a little bit lower. Say something. Hi. Okay, maybe not. You got a lower voice. Uh, no, I don't, know. Like, no, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. Like, like, yeah, EJ, EJ has a pretty low voice, right? Oh, 
Yeah, see, he's got a lot of gravel there. It has to be like that. But So uh, what I'm going to do in this one is... Pyrochloric gases are used here at Infinium. Address some other issues. <laughs> right. Pyrochloric gases are used here at Infinium Temecula. Pyrophorics are materials, solids, liquids... Okay, there we go. That's what I was looking for, right? There's a little bit of, like, spit sound in there, right? Now, that's really subtle, but if you're working in post-production, like me... Is this your water bottle? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, you go through QC, which is quality control, and they listen for little pops and ticks, and they'll send it back uh, because that stuff can mess with your meters later when you're playing on TV. So what we do is we pull all that stuff Solids, out. Solids, liquids. Or that? Just right here. Oops. Yeah. Ugh. yeah. You know what you can do? Number one trick, give them an apple. It'll um, moisten their mouth a little bit. Um, water a lot of times is too much. The apple kind of cleans it up and huh. distributes hmm. the moisture. I just recently learned this. Um, hmm. um, uh, or we can use our post-production tools and clean it up. So, and Temecula. A couple different tools you can use for this. D-Click is really good. Uh, this is really good, too, if they if you have, like, um, I don't know, anything that sounds like a click. D-Click is D-Click, right? Silane gas mixtures. Um, so what we can do, if you want to hear what, they're, they're what this they're is doing, stick yeah, lips sticking call. together, so it's pretty. This. this is with D-Click. and <clears throat> That's oh, all stuff wow. that it's pulling out of her voice, right? Storage. And now, we can't necessarily hear that, but that's what's in there, and that stuff can trip meters later and make it... Uh, yeah. Right? So, I mean, I wouldn't run this on everything, but if it seems particularly clicky... Examples of pyrophoric gases used include... I wouldn't use it on this, but just so you know, that's the capability of the tool. But what I would use is decrackle. That's really good at getting the spit sound. I call it the spit sound, right? This is called decrackle. Examples of... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, right? For it, yes, it's, <laughs> it's really good. it's it's a miracle tool. The way it identifies this is just ridiculous. So let's find that one spot that we really didn't like, or I didn't like it. Or gases that spontaneously ignite when released in the air. Except oh, there's one. Now, one thing we could do is just take this and <coughs> open up our spectral repair tool, which this just lets us reduce things. And I would highlight this section, attenuate process, just turns it down, right? Do that a couple times. And just gets quiet. Ignite when released in the air. Examples. All right, so it kind of goes away, but now it kind of sounds funny. All right, so I'm going to go back a few stages to here, and we got this thing. released in the air. Exa now let's highlight this section. Let's process this. Right, we're going to go to what are we on? Uh, D click. We're going to D click, and we're going to change it to D crackle setting process. Oh, okay. We made a mistake. We hit crackle only. Yeah. That's not what we want that in our just dialogue. Leaves the in yep, it. <laughs> everything else is gone. All right, you can see visually that we had a couple lines here that disappeared. <laughs> so if you check out right there, yeah. see that? Yeah, it's a subtle change, but let's listen. Ignite when released in the air. Examples of pyrophoric gases used. A little less spitty. Say not not too severe. I might crank it up a notch. You know, let's go back one step. Let's turn up our strength to like nine. Just get. Fucking crazy. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yesly ignite when released in the air. Examples of pyrophoric There's gases no used include silane and silane gas mixture. That's a little too far. I think it sounds a little unnatural, but you can totally get away with it. Most people who listen to this stuff, they don't know. You the know, pyrophoric you really gases safe, used include silane. You can do that. So there's some tools. What else is in here that we can talk about? There's not really any plosives in this, I don't think. Three, two. Pyrophoric gases are used here at Infinity. So one thing that happens is, like we were talking about earlier, if you have P sounds, you know, it makes a puff of air. If you don't have one of those things, which is a pop filter on your microphone, it'll bump the microphone diagram, and it makes like a, like a low-frequency sound. Uh, this has a tool called Deplosive, which pretty much removes those. Same kind of thing. A lot of these tools function really similar. Um, uh, you can get a really great demo of this software if you guys are doing video work um, and you have to be doing your own post work. A lot of video guys do, and you know you're having a problem, or you don't have your own audio guy, or you have issues, or whatever. You know, take a look at it; it's pretty cool. This is something that I use all the time. So uh, that's the demo. Do you guys have any other quick questions while we have it up? Uh, is it around like 169? Sorry. How much is it around? Oh, I don't know. There's a bunch of prices. Let's see. You can get a couple different versions of it. Um, they come with different stuff. Basically, they limit your tools. So the version that I have, actually, this is the demo version, so it gives you everything. I don't have ambience match, which generates room tone for you. I don't have EQ match or level or time and pitch or loudness. I have these ones, the noise reduction ones in my bundle. 
Um, I think I paid like 400 bucks. There's a bunch of different versions, right? You can get the really fancy one for 1500 bucks. Um, let's see what else is here. Um, so RX this is the best one to use? I think RX makes the best noise reduction, but the one in Adobe Audition is pretty good. And it functions on the same principles. It's just not as easy to use, in my opinion. If you have Audition, well, I, just I, use I, it, yeah. Because well, I'm in the editing class. And, yeah. And uh, this actually the last uh, a couple of days ago we went into the audition mm -hmm. and pretty much we did a background noise cut to kind mm -hmm. of do the lesson and it actually actually did work pretty good. You know, it's like it took all the background noise out mm -hmm. and that's just through the guy. Yeah, you know, totally. Um, the audition tool is really good. Um, so here are the prices. Yeah. The the one that I have is three forty nine. I think I got a student discount when I was in school and bought it. So if you're buying a student discount, highly recommend it. It's really easy. Uh, the advanced one is what I use at work, and it's 1200 bucks. but you don't need that most of the time. Yeah. So anyways, that's it. Thanks for coming out, guys. Um, so you guys are taking off. Awesome. Um, I hope I have taught you guys a couple things. Yeah. Um, you can feel free to hang out, talk. I can go down. I want to look at my slide. Oh yeah, definitely. Let me check it out. Let me check it out. My log mic, my shotgun mic, and then of course now we have the wire. Call Patrick Green. I have to crank it all the way up. Calling Patrick Green. Yeah. I don't know if I want to shoot the mic. Which oh, you can keep them, man. I like yours. Yeah. Not that that's a great mic. We'll check it out. Yeah. Thanks for checking it. All right, come on in, guys. Hey, Pat. Bring your chairs. Yeah, man. Hey, hey, we're ready. We're ready. Um. You want to? Uh, I got to go to yeah. Gmail, right? Join you guys this train. You gonna oh, you gonna yeah. Gmail me? Yeah. Can I just, uh, can I just oh, you're okay. You're here then. Got it. All right. All right, you guys want to turn off your cameras now? Camera off. You're probably going to want to just, yeah, screen share. You want me to turn the camera off here? Uh, yeah, I'll do it, actually. Okay. All right, you're up. One second. Don't, don't start. Yeah, I need to. Okay. I need to kick it off so it actually. Um, Jacob's, uh, Jacob's on his, uh, he's still outside here. What's up, Pat? You see my screen? Yeah, you're on live. It's broadcasting, so it's Money. All right. How's it going, everybody? Thanks for, for bearing with me and waiting. Uh, you got, one of you guys want to take a seat? Uh, I'll stand. Yeah, cool. I'll All right. Great. All right. So today we're going to talk about noise reduction. Um, I don't like to teach on like uh, stuff on like particular pieces of software because not everybody has a particular software or wants to pay the money for it. But um, I like this particular piece of software because number one, it's kind of the best around at it um, within reason. And also a lot of the principles that it uses apply to a lot of other different softwares. Okay. So this is called Isotope RX. It functions a lot of the same ways like Adobe Audition does. Like a lot of the terminology and stuff is the same. So it's cool to teach with because uh, you guys can apply these principles other other places. Okay, so number one rule of noise reduction is use your ears, okay? Number one problem with noise reduction is people do too much, and it makes things actually sound kind of funny and a lot of times worse than it originally did. Uh, dialogue is king, right? Intelligibility is our goal. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a listen. This first clip was recorded outside. Here's our noise floor. We're making great progress in terms of cleaning up the air, but it's gonna take a while still. 
I, I could tell already that's like from the freeway or the road or something, right? It's like fairly consistent, so we can work with it. We're making great. Um, so let me talk about the window that we're looking at really quick. So um, Isotope RX has a couple different views. This is the waveform view. You guys may be familiar with this from other audio and video editing softwares, right? Has your waveforms represented linearly. If you zoom in, they kind of look like the pictures I was drawing on the board. Uh, and you can see here's him talking, and here's our noise floor, right? So signal to noise ratio in this recording is good but not ideal, right? Because we're making great it's a lot of noise, right? Makes it we're making great progress. So much noise and kind of takes you out of the story, whatever, whatever you're paying attention to the noise. Uh, so what we can also look at is our called a spectrogram view. This is like an audio nerd view, right? So you have your frequencies are represented vertically. Okay, so you have zero hertz is down here and all the way up to 20 hertz or 20,000 hertz. And so you can zoom in and look at like here, we're looking at 10,000 hertz and you can get real crazy with it, right? And so here's our full view again. So you can see uh, the lighter the color, the higher amplitude of sound. So you can see when he starts talking, you get some like really nice bright yellow orange streaks and here's your noise floor. You know, it's not quite as loud, but it still exists underneath and you can see the frequency a spectrum that that noise takes place in, and unfortunately, it's pretty broadband. It means it's taking place in a lot of the frequency spectrum, right? Um, that's like a lot of times how man-made sounds are. If you're recording out in nature, a lot of times you're lucky because like things like birds and crickets and stuff generally you live in like one frequency range. You know, that has to do with nature and evolution and nonsense that we're not going to get into now. But um, so here's our noise, right? It's pretty broadband, but we're going to do some noise reduction. So the most common tool people use in Isotope RX is called Denoise. Okay, Patrick, are you still with me? I'll make sure that he's here. Yeah, he's still here. We just got our mics muted. Cool. I just wanted to double check and make sure. Great. Yeah, I'm still here, Jacob. Thanks, man. And we hear you real clear. It's pretty cool. Money. All right, we're looking good. We're crushing it on the audio end, everyone. Great job. Teamwork. Okay, so here's yeah. our noise floor. Okay, so how these uh, tools function is in order to be able to reduce the noise, they need to know like what exactly the noise sounds like, right? Because waveforms are really complex. It can't just listen to it and tell the difference between noise and speaking. So you have to show it. So we're going to pull up our denoise tool, and we're going to use the dialog denoiser for this one because we got a guy talking. You know, it's fine. And we're going to highlight a section of our noise. All right, that's pretty clean noise. Some birds in there, whatever. And then I'm going to set this to manual mode. And I'm going to hit learn. And you can see these, re these uh, blue dots, they move to represent uh, the noise print that I gave it. So here it is flat. And I hit uh, switch to manual and I hit learn. This is the uh, spectrum, you know, frequency spectrum of our noise, right? And so what this does then is it starts gating individual frequencies. So it's only going to allow certain frequencies to pass when the guy is talking. And you're going to set your, like, you know, threshold or whatever. So let's listen to it. Here's no, with no reduction. The economic costs of air pollution can be staggering. Just they can indeed be staggering. Uh, the economic costs. Of right, so we did a little bit of reduction. Just Here we can really. The cool thing about having like real time processing is that we can highlight a section and like play with it and hear how this how it's affecting our sound. So. The economic costs of air pollution can be staggering. Here's Just like in complete the Los noise Angeles reduction. Basin alone, the costs associated with. Um, let's go back and listen to that again. The economic costs of air pollution can be staggering. So I would say too Just much, too much noise reduction. Alone, the costs right. associated with respiratory. Here's uh, you know, a lot of reduction with a regular threshold. The economic costs of air pollution can be staggering. Just in the Los Angeles basin alone, the costs associated with rest. I'd say actually we're not far off. I think we're doing a little too much. Um, another foundation rule of noise reduction. It's always, always, always better to do less noise reduction multiple times than it is to do one pass with a lot of noise reduction, right? So rather than do 25 decibels of noise reduction, let's do like, you know, five, like five times or something, right? It's going to give you less artifacts and it lets your software kind of understand what's going on better. Um, so let's hit process and see kind of what we're looking at. You can see already the difference here is pretty stark. The economic costs of air pollution can be staggering. Just in the Los Angeles... I kind of hear some funniness in there. So the great thing about Isotope is it has this really great undo thing. They see down here on the bottom right, I can take it back to my initial state, and every step that I do, say I do another noise reduction, it lets me go back one at a time. 
and listen to each stage. It's so great for comparison. That's exactly what it's good for. So let's go too far here. The economic costs of air pollution can be staggering. Just in the Los Angeles yeah, basin problems, alone, right? the costs associated with restoring factors really is hidden. Thin, underwatery. It's not good. We don't like that. So what we're going to do is take it back to our initial state. Let's do like 10 noise reductions. You know, I don't know what the you know thing is. And let's listen to that. You know, here's the difference, right? Pretty good. The economic costs getting there. Can be Feeling good about that. Maybe I want to do a little, little bit more. So let's highlight the same section and let's bump it down to eight. Do a little bit more, right? Now we're looking for a difference. The economic costs of air pollution can be staggering. Just in the Los Angeles basin alone, the costs associated with respiratory infections. Now I still think we went a little bit too far, but you guys kind of get the idea how this works, right? The idea is that you need to have clean room tone. That's why you always record room tone. So you can, well, one of the reasons, so you can get a clean noise footprint and thus tell your software, this is what we're taking out, okay? So that's denoise, that's one tool. Let's move on to our next clip. We're gonna use denoise again. This one is recorded inside. Different kind of noise floor. Welcome to Temecula facility of Infineon Technologies Americas Incorporated. Now, okay, number one problem, this guy is boring me. Um, <laughs> to heck, he sounds really lame, but there's nothing we can do about that. So we're gonna move on and talk about audio quality, right? Like a Welcome to Temecula facility of Infineon Technologies America. Yeah, we got a bunch of problems. We are happy that you have chosen Infineon. Oh man, it's crazy. So we're going to go back to here. There we go. Welcome to Temecula facility of Infineon Technologies. Okay, so one thing I hear uh, is the fluorescent lights in the room. Uh, listen really closely for me, guys, just for a second here. Pretty subtle. You can see it on our spectrogram now. See these lines here? That's the buzzing. How crazy is that, right? So what we can do is use something awesome, like my favorite, one of my favorite tools. It's called dehum. Check this out. Um, you can like tell it the base frequency, and it'll figure everything out. So let's preview this. Let's see if we can figure it out. Presets. I bet we've got a cool preset in here. Let's try 60 hertz wide reduce. Welcome to Temecula facility of Welcome to Temecula facility of Infineon. That's an okay job. It's not great for lights. We're gonna move on. Um, okay, so our other big noise is the air conditioning, right? Now, Welcome to if I heard this in a show, I would say, you know, it's pretty good audio recording. You know, I might not want to mess with it. You know, it sounds pretty good. Honestly, your signal to noise ratio is really good. But uh, let's say we're being especially anal and you're going to send it to me later and I'm going to work on it and I'm going to be really unhappy if it's noisy. So I'm going to say, let's do denoise. Same as before. I'm going to hit learn. You can see our noise floor is lower than our previous clip. And let's preview that. Welcome to Temecula facility of Infineon Technologies Americas Incorporated. We are happy that Here's you have it with, it with the noise. your place of work. The Infineon Corporation the is a world leader in manufacturing. Now, the cool thing about the really subtle noise like air conditioning is you can reduce pretty far without it affecting pretty dramatically. So I'm going to go all the way to 12 and just process this whole clip. Boom. You can see a big difference already. Looking pretty good. Welcome to Temecula facility. Now, what's another problem that you guys hear with this guy's, uh, this deal? So you tell me something. After he, uh says a sentence he goes oh, yeah that's that one thing can he has he has breath yeah totally i would do that in a different kind of tool but you can see the breaths here you know it's a little nasally to me yeah, yeah totally good. that's another good point nasally that's what i was looking for uh we can reduce our breaths um using this tool called uh spectral repair this allows us to highlight a section and turn it down so i have an attenuate tool i can set it to strength 2.4 and process and our breath gets a little quieter. We are happy that you incorporated. We are happy. You know, this isn't really the tool I would use for that. Um, I would actually just take it in the editor and slice it out completely. Um, but that's one option. Um, but let's talk about uh, how he sounds nasally. Welcome to Temecula facility of Infineon Technologies America. Not only does it sound nasally, it sounds hollow and kind of roomy. Um, I'm guessing this was probably recorded in a small office, a small room like this without the acoustic treatment. 
I think Noah was in here a minute ago. Were you here for yeah. this one, Lindsay? Yeah. What is an office or something? Really tiny office. Yeah. Like his desk and sort of yeah. Totally. Desks, offices, they're the worst, right? The problem is the smaller the room, the faster those reflections hit your microphone, and then they start to affect your sound just like this. Remember I was talking about first reflections? They happen so fast, you don't hear them as reflections, right? Or as like reverb, like or echoes or delays or whatever. They just make the voice sound bad, right? So that's why it sounds hollow. So, you know. Welcome to Tomeco facility of Infinity. It's not a lot we can do about that, but we can do something, we can do some EQing and kind of play with it, right? So I'm going to pull up our EQ, uh, corrective EQ tool, right? This is what I did before. Let's go back to default. Um, another thing with EQ and noise reduction, it's really easy to do too much, right? So we got to be very subtle. So let's listen to this. Um, we said it sounds nasally, it sounds a little hollow. Welcome to Temecula. I'm going to look around for those sounds. Technologies America's Incorporated. We are happy that you have chosen kind of Infinian as your place of work. The Infinian Corporation is a world leader in some manufacturing of, of electronics. Infinian designs, develops, manufactures, easy to go and too far. a broad range of semiconductors and system solutions. The focus of its activities is Sounds on a little bit better. Now I might want to add some body back into his voice. Welcome to Temecula facility of Infinian Technologies America's Incorporated. We are happy that you have chosen Infineon as your place of work. A little bit better. Let's, uh, yeah. let's listen to it and we'll hit bypass, right? Welcome to Temecula facility of Infineon Technologies Americas Incorporated. We are happy that you have chosen Infineon as your place of work. The difference In is pretty subtle, but it's a little bit of an improvement. You know, it's really easy to go too far, right? So let's say I did something like this. Welcome to Temecula facility of Infineon Technologies Americas Incorporated. It starts to sound unnatural. You know, it's it's good, but it's not like you know really real or whatever. So, anyways, uh, the trick is to be careful. EQ. So we process this one. It sounds pretty good. Let's listen to it. Welcome to Temecula facility of Infineon Technologies America. Oh, sorry, too far. Okay. Here's the initial one. Welcome to Temecula facility of Infineon Technologies Americas Incorporated. Right. You know, it's we're a big improvement. You know, not totally necessary, but you did it. All right. Let's do another one. This is my favorite. Um, this was recorded in this room, I believe. You may have been here for this season. I'm not sure. This is a voiceover this is gonna be recording. Pyrophoric gases are used here at Infineon Temecula. Pyrophorics are materials, solids, liquid. So we got a lot of good things going for this recording. Number one, it was recorded in a quiet room. The noise floor, solo, I probably wouldn't even mess with it, right? Like, it's really good. Pyrophoric gases. Yeah. Not worth messing with, right? It's really quiet. We're we're in great we're in great shape. That's like studio territory. So, uh, this is the problem that I hear, and there's a lot of this throughout. You that? Get that girl an apple. That's a voiceover recording trick. You're getting a lot of spit sounds. Eat an apple. Okay. Pro tip. Pyrophoric gas. And that kind of is throughout. So listen opinion. for a second. I can't talk already. <laughs> oh, man, killing me. Pyrophoric gases are used here at Infineon Temecula. Pyrophorics are materials, solids, liquids, or gases that spontaneously yeah. ignite you when you're in between in almost every word right through here, right? She's opening and closing her mouth as the actors do. And it sounds like that. Um, now that's really subtle and you won't always notice it, but those kind of pops and ticks that come from that kind of sound, if you're doing post production on a project and it's going to go through any kind of quality control or it's going to go on TV. Some guy is going to sit there with headphones and listen really closely, and anytime he hears a pop or a tick, he's going to make a mark on a sheet, and you have to go back and fix it later. Because if you broadcast on TV, that affects like the way that they process their audio. It's a whole big thing. I'm not going to get into it, but we need to have it sound clean. So what we're going to do is listen back to these. Pyrophorics are materials, solids, liquids. You can hear a little bit in here. Right? So a uh, great tool for this is called B-Click. D-click is really good at taking out little, like, small momentary sounds. Uh, the D-click setting is really good at removing sounds that are clicky. I wouldn't call this clicky, but you can do this great thing where you listen to the clicks only. It's all in there. Not really noticeable, but you can pull it out. But what we really want for something that's spitty is D-crackle. This is my fave, my fave tool, all right? Let's listen to the crackle. That's a little more than I would do, but <laughs> right? You can hear it all. Isn't that gross? It's <laughs> the worst. So we're going to pull all that out. So what we're going to do is just highlight our section. I, again, noise reduction, easy to do too much. I'm going to start conservatively. And remember, here's like kind of these spots or kind of where our problem areas are. 
So I'm going to keep an eye on those in this process. It takes a little bit. And we already made a mistake, and that is that we left the crackle only button on. So guess what this is going to sound like? Great. <laughs> so we're going to uncheck that box and redo it. I use this tool on a daily basis with studio recorded stuff. That's the reality of life. Uh, and let's see how it sounds. Solids, liquids, or gases. It's a little better. I still hear it in there, so I might do another pass, and this time I'm going to crank it up. Let's crank it up to uh, 6.8 process. And there we go. Now we're looking good. Let's listen again. Pyrophorics are materials, solids, liquids, or gases that spawn. Yeah, you really were hearing it before in between those words. So Pyrophorics are materials, solids, liquids, or gases. Right now, let's listen to the initial one. Solids, liquids, or gases that spawn. You can hear it now, right? Um, so that's another great tool. Um, uh, RX has a couple other good tools that I'm not going to talk too much about, um, but it has things like deplosive, uh, de-reverb, which kind of works to varying degrees of success. That's a really tough one. Uh, if you're recording outdoors, it has ambience match, which allows you to basically generate room tone from a clip with no room tone, um, something like in our first one. And uh, it has EQ and whatever and all that stuff. Um, I think it's a good tool if you guys are doing film production, you're doing your own audio work, which a lot of people are, and you have mics up close, or you're really trying to produce high quality, it's a really good tool for that. Um, I don't think it's very expensive. I think the version that I use costs like 350 bucks. You know, that's kind of expensive. If you're a student, you can get a discount. They'll like give you half off or something crazy like that. Um, the version I use at work is like 1200 bucks, but most people don't even need that. So, um, but that's Isotope RX. What questions do you guys have about noise reduction? What did they do before digital? That yeah, moment, no, things were just louder. <laughs> tape, tape hiss, can you imagine? They just left it there. Yeah, well, you would just do something like this, right? Because, like, you know how we talked about we had this this noise in here, like, in our initial thing? Right, what you would have to do is take an EQ plugin and go through and listen to this and say, all right, where is that frequency, right? Oh, there's something right there. And then you would do this and make it super skinny and pull that out, right? And then you would go do that like 20 times. And it would take you forever. And that's basically what the noise reduction is doing. But the noise reduction is reacting to the person's voice, and this is not. So a lot of the messages we have now are superior. Technology is crazy. Like the fact that we can do this, totally nuts. Um, but like I said, number one rule, be careful because it's really easy to do too much. Um, other questions? Where does threshold come in? Because I, I, on the, the app that I, the program I use, it has a noise yeah. removal, and and I and I highlight a section of, of noise mm -hmm. or generic, and then I it does kind of the learning function. Yeah. And then it and then it does the whole, the whole thing, and then I highlight the whole the whole the whole audio clip. Yep. And then it does its own thing, but there's sex, there's ways to adjust like the onset and totally. the threshold, and, and so, I don't understand how any of that works. I just let me kind show of you. Put it like a, a yeah. third of the way in and left it. I, yeah, I never really and you can get away with a lot doing that. Um, the threshold. What what this is doing is it's basically called a noise gate. So what it does is it listens to these specific frequencies according to this curve, and whenever uh, and if the amplitude of the sound that it's listening to is below the threshold level, which is this blue line here, it turns it off, and then as soon as it Tate, it moves above the threshold, and you can watch this take place here. Welcome to Temecula it opens and allows that frequency to pass through. We are happy that right, so if we raise our threshold, it takes more amplitude of sound to allow the sound to pass through, but if we lower the threshold, a quieter sound will allow it to pass through, which means a lot of times that our noise floor is now Welcome above our threshold, so we're not doing any noise that kind of makes sense. A well, bit. I, I know on, on mine, mm -hmm. and I have there's a whole bunch of add-ins yeah. that I can do. And and what I've been doing is I'll have the original audio clip, and then the first thing I'll do is I'll run gate over it. Noise gate, yeah. And then I'll run a compression over it. Mm -hmm. And then whatever's left, all the crap, I usually use the noise removal tool to do the rest of it. Should I not be doing all of those steps? Or am I duplicating those steps? No, I mean, I think it's totally fine. I mean, the best thing to do is, like I said, you know, use your ears. If it sounds better at the end, 
you're nailing it. Like, great job. But, you know, if you start to hear that kind of underwatery sound and you hear it cutting in and out, then you've probably done too much. Um, it's fine. The thing to keep in mind about compression is, and this isn't something that we talk about in noise reduction, but um, a lot of times we compress our sounds, and basically what that means is you're taking the louder sounds and turning them down so that they're closer to the level of the regular sounds, right? So the problem is that is that noise is a quieter sound. So if you have a noise floor in your thing and you compress it, you're turning down your voice and bringing up your noise floor. Because um, so it's all going to be kind of reversing your. Is your I'll, I'll put out, let's say, a podcast, mm -hmm. and I'll have it in the car, and it gets louder and quieter and louder and quieter. Mm -hmm. And I thought by compressing it, I was keeping the highs not as high and the lows yeah. not as low, and then the whole thing was kind of the same volume. Yeah. So a compression isn't really the volume. So well, it is, and and you're right. That's the right thing to do. But the trouble is, the limitations of that is that it's affecting everything. You know. Okay. So, but by performing noise reduction before you compress it, then you're you know, keeping that noise from becoming louder because you're eliminating it in advance. Okay. So I, yeah. so I would say, yeah, I would do noise reduction, clean up all the time is usually at the beginning of the signal chain. Then you perform your correct, um, then you perform your compression and your equalization and stuff after. Okay. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Cool. I've worked with you guys for like three hours now, so thank you guys for sticking with me. <laughs> Thanks for coming out. It was great. Thank you. Yeah, it was really good. Thanks. All right. Pat, we're all done, man. I'm stopping the broadcast.